turn this one on and waste the battery when I got this one. So, um, you know, so as we come into this and as we uh, just lift up everything, um, and, and remember this is third Wednesday, so if you want to get up, get you something to drink, um, go get something, do something, it's a bit more relaxed. Um, but it's also one of the things that we're going to share. Um, what we're going to do is Michael is going to come up here in just a moment, and he's going to uh, share a little bit with us about discernment and what that means because, you know, looking at the gifts of the Holy Spirit and thinking about those things. And then after he's done sharing in that, then what we're going to do is I'll put the mic over here where we had it before, and then we'll do some worship songs, and then we'll open the mic up for if anybody has any prayers, they want to come up and pray and have everybody agree with them. And then we'll do some, you know, and then um, at the end of that, then I'll, I'll read a psalm and then we'll, you know, we'll, we'll do some more worship and then we'll open the mic up. And if anybody wants to come up, have a word from the Lord, have a, their own psalm or scripture that they feel the Lord's really been wanting them to share with everybody, then we'll do that. Um, and uh, just remember when you do it, you know, you don't want to stand way back here from the mic. You know, you just want to stand, you know, within a couple of fists, you know. Um, of this mic, but you don't want to get up right on it either, right? So, um, so you know, we're going to do that tonight and just kind of open it up. And this is a, a time of the Holy Spirit to move on us and, and work with us and for you and I to uh, be open to what he's doing with us. So for right now, though, please, if you would, welcome Michael Justice. <laughs> Golf clap. Golf clap. Before I start, let's pray. Lord, we come before you now and we ask, Lord, that you would speak to each one of us <coughs> and God, I pray that you would Remove me from the equation so that your truth will come to in Jesus' name. Amen. So, in looking at discernment, I was kind of like, okay, <laughs> what is it? And, and before I jump into it, I just want to read from our text in First Corinthians chapter 12. And uh, that's kind of what we've been going through on third Wednesdays. And uh, starting in verse 4 of 1 Corinthians 12. And it says, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences in ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities in activities, but the same God. Works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom. Through this 
Chironada de Rosa, Knowledge, Sude, Shamespeare, Chironada Faith by the Shamespeare, Chironada the Walking, uh, the Gifts of Healings by the Shamespeare, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of uh, tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but one in the same spirit um, works in all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. And so what does it mean to discern? Well, in the Greek, that word is diakosis. And the translation is a judicial estimation or to make a judgment to separate into groups. And we are called to do this in several places. Um, in First John chapter 4, then we're going to be turning a lot tonight, so get ready. <laughs> but in First John chapter 4, beginning in verse 1, John says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the spirit is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist which you have heard of coming and is now already in the world. So right there we see that we need to separate out those who confess Christ and those that don't. And uh, when Paul was kind of expanding on the gift of tongues in First Corinthians 14, um, and, and there he's kind of going through 
how some of the gifts are to be implemented in verse 29 of First Corinthians 14. It says, let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge. We need to make sure that whenever anyone stands up here that they speak the truth. Myself included. Um, don't believe anything I say just because I say it. But you need to make sure that it lines up with the Word of God. And so, We see that we're called to do it, but how does it work? What, what happens? And so, I'd like to give a few examples in Acts chapter 5. We see that the brothers in the church are coming together and selling what they have and giving it to the church. And Ananias and Sapphira participate in that, but they didn't do it with the right heart. And in verse 3, the Spirit speaks through Peter and says, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Spirit and keep back part of the flesh of the land for yourself? And if you look at chapter 5 up to this point, There was no investigation into what had happened. And, and so it's clear to see that the only way Peter knew was by the spirit of the all-knowing God. Um, in Revelation chapter 2, you know, that's where we see the seven letters to seven churches. And in that first letter, uh, the Lord is writing to Ephesus in, um, in verse 2. He says, I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested 
those who say they are apostles and are not and have found them liars. And this is the part of the letter where Jesus is commanding the church and saying, you know, it's good that you've been diligent to make sure that what these um, what what these so called apostles say and whether or not it's true. Um, and also in Acts 17, I tell you we're going to be turning a lot. Um, Paul is uh, talking about some of his Journeys and in verse 11, um, he says these, and, and that the Bereans were more fair minded than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Everything that Paul and uh, I believe on the base, uh, told them they didn't take them and to say, okay, that, that's what it is. They took it and said, okay, does this line up with the scriptures? And see, I think there are a few guidelines for how, how discernment happens, how it works today. In First Corinthians chapter 2, We see that discernment comes by the Holy Spirit. And in verse 14, Paul says, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. The only way we can exercise this gift given from God is by the Holy Spirit. And uh, you don't have to turn there, but um, in Isaiah 29, uh, we see an instance where 
I take this that discernment away from the people because they've kind of fallen in to legalism, right, or a, a form of legalism. And he talks about to kind of sum up yeah, a couple of verses there. Um, they were giving their service to God. And, you know, kind of playing the church game and you know, I'm alright, right? And, but, they won't doing it in the spirit. And so, uh, in the latter half of verse 14, he says, For the wisdom of the wise man will perish in the understanding of the prudent man shall be hidden. So just as the Holy Spirit distributes the gift as he wills, he can also take it away. Secondly, the summit comes through the Word of God. And we find that in Hebrews chapter 4. And in verse 12 of Hebrews 4. It says, for the word of God is living and powerful and trouping any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts of the heart. Again, going back and comparing everything to the Word of God, as the Bereans did. And finally, just in the next chapter, Hebrews 5, this moment comes with spiritual maturity. And um, in verses 12 through 14, uh, the writer of Hebrew says, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the world of righteousness, for he is a babe. 
But solid food was fourteen belongs to those who are for, who are of four age. That is, those who, by reason, have the use of their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. To effectively be able to discern between spirits, between just what people say, we need to be continually maturing in the Lord. And to do that, we need to be actively pursuing Christ and determined to live like he lived and to be led by his spirit daily. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we thank you for this time and for your revelation to each one of us. And I pray that you would continue to minister to us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Michael. It's not from him. It was there earlier. I'll just keep looking at it the whole night. Okay, we're good. You can unmute it. Okay. <laughs> hey, just see me. It's that ADD slipping on. So, um, okay, so thank you so much for that. Um, bless the Lord. Uh, keep that discernment in mind. Um, noting those things and being open when the Holy Spirit gives you that little warning sign. It doesn't matter who's posting it. You know, um, some of the greatest men of theology can get dumb real fast because we're men. So, um, but now, so we're going to move from uh, looking at discernment of spirits and, and knowing these things and understanding, and we're going to now look at missions a little bit. One of the things that we're going to have is we're going to have um, a friend of ours. We've known her, and she's been a friend of the family for a long time. Um, her name is uh, Tina McDougall. No, her name is Sheila Purcell, and uh, she just spent a, a an extended long-term mission trip in Guatemala, and she's going to come up and share for about five minutes or so about what God's done with her and what God's doing there, and um, perhaps where God's going to take her next. Come on up, Sheila. start up oh, yeah thank you <laughs> dear god um i thank you for tonight and thank you for this opportunity to be here and to speak in front of everybody and i pray that you would um speak through me and that you would be glorified and only you would be glorified lord in your name i pray jesus amen okay so um when i went to guatemala i was originally only going for six months and about two and a half months into that, um, the pastor in Guatemala asked me to stay an extra six months. At first, I didn't want to. I really wanted to come back <laughs> to Houston. <laughs> and um, But after a few weeks of praying about it, like God had just placed um, a love for the people there um, in me. And so I was like, okay, I'll stay longer. <laughs> And um, while I was there, I was, um, I was directing children's ministry. 
Um, I temporarily worked at the restaurant that they had there. I taught English at um, a school that the church had opened called Christian in Calvary Christian Academy. And but my favorite ministry that I was serving with was um, working with the youth and the young adult girls. And I worked with about 10, 10 girls in total, but five of them like real closely. And we did Bible studies together. First we did kind of like a foundations class. And then we were going through Romans. And, um, and I wanted to share Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. So I I didn't go there just to just to pour into people there. Like God had it for iron to shop, sharpen iron. And in the time that I was there, I I got to draw close to God like I never thought was possible. I had seen it in other people, but I didn't. I had never really experienced it myself and just being able to see God's love and his patience through us sinners <laughs> and that he would give me the opportunity to go on a mission trip <laughs> and after just not being a, a good person you know <laughs> um, in Guatemala prayer needs that are out there uh, well first I want to share the, the Calvary in, in Guatemala, they have, over the last year, they have extended their sanctuary. They've built a youth ministry, or a youth building, and, um, and they started the school this year. So God's, God's doing a work out there. And then, so like prayer needs for, for Guatemala in general, is their political system, like any political system in the world, but um, in Guatemala, it really seems like the leaders that they've had is there just to get money, and they they really just um, hurt hurt the country. So um, for better leaders, <laughs> um, there's there's a lack of opportunity there economically, and so prayer for new job opportunities and um, part of that is the education that they have it's not it's not that well done um, a lot of the teachers there think that um, if they just give their kids more and more homework but really it just makes the kids tired and they can't do their work well and so it's really hard for them to um, get a good education there even if they can't afford it <laughs> And um, what's next? My, my desire right now um, is to start like a homework outreach ministry in Guatemala. Uh, next week I'm starting a class to teach ESL worldwide. And, um, and then to start the homework outreach ministry um, it's because it, the kids need a safe environment to study and to do projects. And I want to provide resources, computer, internet, and printers for them to come. And, you know, if they don't have the money to get internet when they need, need it to study. And um, the kids who can't afford school, um, teach them to read and teach them to speak English. Because um, in Guatemala, um, if you can speak English, that goes a long way. So these kids who can't afford an education will still be able to have a profession when they grow up as translators or tour guides or even an English teacher themselves. And um, with this program, um, we would do outreaches to the youth on the weekends and do um, Bible studies with them too. And again, that's something I'm praying about. It's not something that's set in stone. So if y'all could be praying for me about that, that would be awesome. And
Thank you. Now is um, I'm going to pray, and as I pray, the band is going to come up, and uh, then we're going to worship together, okay? <clears throat> Father, I just come to you right now, Lord, and thank you so much just for this time together, for uh, what you're doing here and for what you're doing in us. And I just lift everyone here up to you, Lord, and pray that um, for, for everyone, Lord, from Michael to Sheila to each and every person in here, that each and every person would recognize and know uh, that you want to bless them, you want to use them, you have um, great things in store and in mind for each and every one of us, Father, that we need not fear, we need not wonder, um, because your plans for us are good. You, you, Lord, seek to move upon us and to use us for your glory. And Lord, sometimes that glory doesn't look exactly like what we think it should. And Father, when it doesn't, help us to see with your eyes to see with your time, to see with your heart. Not out of a selfish desire or other motivations, Lord, but lead us by your Holy Spirit that we would be broken for you. We lift all these things up to you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would.